So spring is here. Can you feel it in the air? It's like, yay, finally. And even though it's still raining in Seattle, the days are getting longer and lighter. And, you know, there's just always this feeling in the air, this feeling of newness and rebirth when we hit spring. It's so great. So not only have we moved our clocks forward, but there's a general impulse forward in nature, right? Because we see it with the flowers coming up and... and uh, Birds are returning. My little Beethoven bird that I have in my yard is back. I heard him this morning. He sings that little Beethoven's ninth, just a few verses of it. He does, and he's there every year. It's, I'll miss him if he ever goes. But, you know, and then the lambs and the chicks and the puppies are all being born, and, and, and it's opening day for baseball in just a couple of weeks. I love that line from John Fogarty's song where he says, we're born again, there's new grass on the field, right? I mean, there's nothing like it. It's like we can start all over again. It doesn't matter what happened last year. There's this whole brand new experience that is in front of us. So we have this sense that we can start over and there's almost the smell of hope in the air. With spring comes this possibility. I was in Los Angeles last week visiting my son, Jordan, and his school friend, Rainer. They went to a grammar school together at Waldorf. And I, I get L.A. finally. It's taken me a while to get L.A., but I, I could just feel from them like this incredible possibility that's in the air. They're both doing what they want to do. My son's a film editor, and his friend is working for BuzzFeed as a... I don't know, he scouts out places for where, move, where scenes and movies take place. But, but there's, there's this exciting uh, community that's there, and it's almost like you don't know which one is going to take off and who's going to make it, right, and who's not. And So there's this excitement, and they feel like they're... Like it, it, being with them, is, it felt like being with spring. That's what it felt like, that young energy. So this year we're on a transformative journey, and... Um, I've been reviewing some of the things that we've done over the last seven years. Last month we looked at prayer from the different perspectives of the different religions and how they approach prayer and what are their favorite prayers and what is the gift that each religion brings to us through prayer. So that was last month. And then this month I kind of want to focus back again a little bit on the 12 powers. We spent two years two different years going over the 12 powers, as well as a little bit of the review of the dreaming process. Remember when we did that one year, let the dreamers wake the nation. And the powers that I think go along with spring are the powers of faith and imagination. Faith because, like spring, it feels like anything is possible, and imagination because you see the flowers and the trees and everything's just kind of multiplying just the way our imagination does. And when we have faith and imagination, I, I think that when they're together, there's nothing that we can't do. And when we have faith, we're able to take on impossible feats. It's, it's like, you know, putting a pin on a map and going, okay, that's the direction that I'm going to move in. And I may not know how to get there, but all I got to do is take the next step that is in front of me, right? I think it was Martin Luther King who said, you don't have to walk up the whole staircase at once. All you have to do is take one step. So we take one step, and then we take the next step and the next step. So the story, I think, for me that really illustrates faith more than any other is the story of Peter walking on water. Peter represents faith. He is the disciple who represents faith. To me, he's an Aries because he also acts impulsively and he just sort of does things without thinking. So the disciples are out in the boat and they see something out on the water and they look and they see that it's Jesus who's walking on the water. And, and uh, Peter says, you know, basically, is that you? And Jesus says, yes, come to me. So without thinking, as Peter does, he just jumps out of the boat. He steps out on the water and he starts walking toward Jesus, right? And then what does he do? He feels the wind on his face. And he looks around and he sees the waves. And all of a sudden, he sinks. And as soon as he sinks, he puts out his hand and he says, help. And Jesus pulls him up and he says, oh, you of little faith, right? So when we look at this story as our story, when we look at this story metaphysically, the boat 
represents the status quo. It represents your comfort zone. You're in your boat, you're happy, you got all your friends with you, everything's cool. And then you're called out and you have a dream. You have, it, it, the, Jesus represents the Christ. He represents that Christ principle, that which is calling us out of ourselves into something higher, into something bigger, into something more wonderful. And we see that and we step out of it and we start going toward that goal, that dream, that Christ principle. And what happens sometimes? You might look around and go, ooh, you know, I had this dream of maybe going back to school and ah, the waves start and the wind and maybe I didn't plan enough money for this or, you know, maybe I didn't quite see all the obstacles that were in my way. And if we focus too much on those, we sink, right? So when we give way to the waves, the waves also can represent emotions and turmoil, um, then we, we simply sink and then the dream is over. And the truth is that if we don't have a dream right now, like, uh, like just for a moment, what is, what is your current dream? And maybe you don't have one, that's okay, because we go through different periods in our lives, but what is your dream right now? Because we need that dream, whatever it is. We are co-creators of God, and it is that dream that keeps us alive. When we stop dreaming, I think we start dying. And we use our imagination and faith to start bringing that dream into our lives. And if we only focus on the wind and the waves, then it can sink us. So whatever your dream is, it's always important that you give voice to your doubter, right? Whenever you go, I'm going to do this, and then there's a part of you that's like, ah, no, you're not. But it's important not to just push that aside, but to give it a voice, to make a list, perhaps, of all the reasons why your dream might not happen, and then ask yourself, and this is from our dreaming sequence that we did a few years ago, ask yourself, is this a real obstacle or is this a limiting belief? Because sometimes we want to have a dream and it's like, all right, I don't have enough money for that just yet, but there's something I can do about it. So when we have an obstacle to our dream, there's something that we can do to, to work with it. But the other is, what if it's a limiting belief? And what's a limiting belief? Well, who are you to think that you can have that dream? You know what? You're not cute enough or rich enough or young enough or old enough or whatever good enough and the limiting belief can sometimes be the waves and the wind that sink us in our dream before we even get going and a limiting belief can be released it can be let go it can be you know faced so as a spiritual community we have voted to move toward the Christ principle in the form of a new building, right? We're in our boat. We're really comfortable here. We've been here since 1959. We got our seats that we always sit in. We got our perfect little places that we're in. And then all of a sudden, we saw something more. We saw a vision, something in the form of the Christ principle of we could have a new, updated, beautiful, incredible facility. So we're called out of the boat as a community. We're called toward that dream. And, and it's beginning to manifest, right? So we're having a congregational meeting on April 30th. And we'll have Olson and Kundig, the architects here, and they'll have a, a design for us to look at. Um, and we'll just talk about what's going on. And I just want to share with you, because I've been on the design committee and I'm a part of all the processes, and I know when we just come on Sunday, we're like, hey, what's happening anyway? Um, so what we're looking at is um, three-story building on, on this side of the property that faces the park. We are so blessed and we are so lucky in South Lake Union. I think this is going to be like a little New York down here with all these I mean, we see it everywhere, and I, I admire you, and I applaud you for, for, for dealing with the traffic and the parking and coming here, um, not giving into the waves and the wind of the, of the parking situation. Um, 
and the first floor, and none of this is in, written in stone or steel, it's just been what I've been hearing. The first floor will be uh, for the youth department and for the administration. We're going to have 50 parking spaces underneath. The second floor will be the sanctuary, which will overlook the park, as well as a chapel or some, a room that we could use as yoga room so that if the sanctuary uh, needs more space, we can expand out. And the third floor will be a uh, reception area, uh, reception, area, reception area, fellowship hall, kitchen kind of a place. Wouldn't it be great to have meetings there? You know, you're up there and you can overlook the park. How gorgeous would that be? And then hopefully a rooftop garden. Now all of this is based on the budget because everything is determined by the numbers. But we're seeing this this dream begin to manifest. So we're heading out of the boat and we're walking toward this dream. And will there be the wind and the waves? Absolutely there will be. There will be obstacles that, that will come in front of us. And, and, and together we can meet those, right? So it's just like take this step, take that step, take this step, take that step. So as a community, we're, we're stepping out of the boat together. And we have all the wind in the waves, like, where are we going to move? And when do we get back here? I think we get back here in 2020, and we're looking for a place to move. So we don't have to move out till next year, so we're good. <laughs> you don't have to pack it up next week, no. Um, so what is your dream that you are holding in your heart right now? And have you stepped out of the boat have you stepped out of the boat and started moving toward this Christ principle that's calling you into something larger than what you already are? Because you wouldn't have that dream if you weren't being called out by something that's bigger inside of you or greater, the, the Spirit of God that dwells within all of us. And just know that, you know, the wind and the waves are part of the deal. And even if you fall, you can get right back up again. So here's the cool thing. I think that even when we're facing an ending, it's actually also a beginning. And we're looking at that again with our, with our life here at this ministry. But even what we call the end, the big end, like death, is also a springing forward into a new reality. Um, Carrie Fisher, who was Princess Leia, right, in the Star Wars movie, made her transition, was it last month, right? By the way, the... Um, one night a month, we have the lightsaber group that meets downstairs, practicing their downstairs. <laughs> After the board meeting Thursday night, I saw one of the Jedi Knights in his robes putting his stuff away. And I said, did you, did you have a good time? He goes, oh, we had such a great time being here. So maybe we can get them to do something for us. <laughs> There's a club for everything, isn't there? <laughs> lightsaber. <laughs> Everyone will want to join that one. And as many of us know, Debbie Reynolds, her mother died a few days after she did. And I was um, reading an article by Todd Fisher, who's Carrie's brother and Debbie Reynolds' son. And when he came home from the hospital after she had died, he noticed that, you know, sh that he was worse off than she was. And she said, you know... I hoped that it had gone a different way. In other words, she had hoped that she had gone first. But now, it's, since it's gone this way, I have to go and be with her. So what's interesting is he said that he felt like she was asking for his permission to go. And they were planning for the memorial service, and she started to try to make changes to it to include herself. And he was like, oh, this is weird. And then she's going over the estate with him, and he goes, Mom, we've gone over this a hundred times. I already know. And she goes, yes, I know, but I want to make sure you're taking the dog. He goes, yes, I'm going to take the dog. And, you know, she said, you know, I really love you. Carrie. And he goes, Mom, I know you do. And he goes, and I do too. I mean, she was with me when I learned to walk. You know, she's my older sister. And, he, and she said, you know, I really love Carrie. And I don't want you to think that I don't love you. And he goes, well, no, I, I know that, you know, love is different. There's different degrees. And she said, but I have to go and I have to, I want to be with Carrie. And she literally closed her eyes and died. It's a very interesting story. You can hear him say it. Um, it's actually videoed. But she, 
had made that choice that she was done here. She was done, and it was time for her to go, and it was time for her to be with her sister. So even what we call the end is a beginning. Again, I was in L.A. last week, and we went to the Griffith Observatory to uh, go to the Sky Show. It was called the Center of the Universe, I think. And in typical L.A. fashion, it was perfect. I mean, it was perfect. This gorgeous chiseled man came out. You know, he looked like a god himself. And they turn off the lights in the observatory and the stars start to come out. And he has this big orb in his hand that lights up and he lifts it, lifts it up so it looks like the sun is rising. And he starts to tell the story of the constellations and all the different stars and all the zodiac. And then he goes, on and on and he starts and and of course with the observatory they can bring all this in visually and all of a sudden we see the Milky Way and we go past the Milky Way and there's there's galaxies upon galaxies upon galaxies they just look like little dust balls just floating in the air and and uh, you know just describing how the universe is always expanding and being in that it's like how could we ever think that life is going to end I mean really you know we're in this place and we're in this body but when we've got a universe that's expanding and we've got thousands and billions of galaxies out there there's a lot for us to do <laughs> You know, there's a lot for us to see. It never ends. And so even what appears to be an ending is a springing forward. We're always being called out of the boat. Sometimes it's the boat of the physical body. We're being called out of the boat and into the Christ spirit, into the God self. So spring brings all things new. So just feel it, relish it, love it. In whatever way you do, whether it's the baseball or March Madness or planting in your garden. And faith and imagination are the, are the tools that we use to manifest our dreams because it's why we're here. We are co-creators of God. We are here to co-create a world that works for all. So get out of the boat, get out of your comfort zone, and head toward the Christ, head toward the Spirit, head toward your dream.